Hello and welcome. I'm your Geek Eric. And today I'll be going over five tips to help you use Godot and C Sharp together. So first off, let me go through some software that I use in my projects to help you follow along. They'll also be listed in the description below. First up, of course, you'll need Godot, but not just any version of Godot. You'll need the mono binary version of Godot, which will be linked below. Next up, I suggest using VS Code, and alongside of it, there's a couple of Godot extensions, uh, slash the C Sharp extension, that really help out game making experience, let's say. The Godot extensions allow you to see the input names while you're in VS Code, as well as the names of the different physics layers. It also has some helpful hints while you're editing. But the main reason that I use VS Code, because I believe you get those with the Godot editor, the main reason that I use VS Code is you'll get the IntelliSense, you get uh, a very simple way of navigating all of your files. So let's say that you're calling a function several times around your program. Let's say there's like a score instance and you are calling that from an enemy, from a pickup, from the player. They're all updating the score. And you just want to see every place that it's called in your code base. Well, if you have all this set up, you can right click on that function or variable, and it will show all the references. It, uh, it also works the other direction. If you're looking at a place where it's referenced, let's say you've come back to your project three months later, you didn't comment it super well, and now you're trying to figure out where everything is, and you found this, this reference of update score, and it's passing in a variable. Well, you could right click on that and see where it's declared. Uh, this this really helps, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the coming back to a project three months later and having no idea what you wrote. <laughs> um, it helps you pick it back up much quicker. I am also using the mono libraries and .NET Core. If you want the before set uh, IntelliSense and debugging to work, you'll need these. You may also need MSB. So first, let me help you get your external editor set up. So once you have your go.project open, go over to editor, then editor settings. Now we need to change a couple of things. So first of all, under text editor, then external, you want to select use external editor. Then you need to provide the path to the editor. Now these flags are really helpful. I will have them in the description so you can just copy and paste it. But what this will do is, let's say there's an error um, while your game is running, you could click on that error and it's going to open your project and put the cursor right on the line where it thinks the, ed the error is coming from. Now, it doesn't always get it 100% right. Sometimes an error in one spot will cause a different spot to fail and it will show you that symptom area and not the actual cause, but hey, it's getting you close. So after you got these three done, go down to uh, debugger, and you don't have to do this, but I like switching to the remote scene tree whenever you run the game. And then under mono, go to builds. I like using the .NET CLI. You can choose MS build. But uh, I just have better experience with this one. Your mileage may vary. And uh, under editor, again, I'm using Visual Studio Code, so select that there. Now that we have that set up, you should be able to click on one of your scripts. Uh, I will click one under my script folder. So let's go over here and let's click on the bullet script. Okay, so now that this is open, there's a couple of things that we need to make sure that you have set up. So, 
over here is the extension tab. Uh, you're going to want to have the C Sharp extension from Microsoft installed, then the C Sharp tools for Godot, and I also like this Godot tools. Um, you could install the GD script one if you will also be using both GD script and C Sharp in your project. Okay, now you're set up. Let's move on. So first up, let's talk about exposing variables to the editor. For example, we have this bullet speed value here, damage, and what layers we want the bullet to collide with. Now let's open up the script. And now as you can see, we have a mixture of private and public variables here. So if you're coming from Unity, you'll be used to just typing public and then the variable, and that variable will be exposed to the editor. In Godot, it's a little bit different. You do have to put this export in front of every variable that you would like to be exposed into the editor. That being said, they also give us some pretty cool property hints. For example, this 3D physics layer hint. Now, it is a unsigned 32-bit int as far as the script's concerned, but typing that into the editor to do the, the bitwise on what you want to collide with would not be a great developer experience. So they have nicely provided this property hint for us. Now let's go back into the editor and we'll find what this property hint has done is it's given us these boxes here and it has the value uh, slash the name of what this layer is called. Uh, you can come through here and you could click whichever one you want the bullet to interact with. Now for this we just want to interact with the environment and the enemy units. So, and sorry setup, but this is just an example of the property hints. There are many more in the documentation and I will link to that page in the description. So for tip number three, let's go over ray casting in Godot using C Sharp. This actually stumped me for a little bit whenever I was first learning Godot. So I just want to go over it here with you just in case it gives you trouble as well. So it's actually a pretty simple format to fire the raycast. You just want to grab a reference to, to the physics direct space state. Then you need to get the Godot collection dictionary and store the result of the intersecting ray. Now let's use those editor hints that I talked about before to help us out here. So we're going to pass in where we want the raycast to go from and to. Next up, we'll pass in any objects that we would like to exclude from the raycast. So let's say that you were shooting the ray from within the player and you didn't want the ray to collide with the player, you would pass in that as a body. Um, I'm not shooting the ray from inside of anything, so that's fine. Uh, I'm just passing in null. Next up, we will pass in that collide with layers that we talked about earlier. Then I want it to collide with bodies and I want it to collide with areas, so true and true. If you only want it to collide with collision bodies, then do true and false. Or they're actually defaults, defaulted to true and false, so you don't have to put in anything. Pretty nice. Next up, this is the part where it got a little tricky for me, um, mainly because I'm coming from Unity and it's just done a little bit different. So we just need to check, hey, is that result null? Okay, if it is, just return. There's nothing else I want to do here if it's null. Then we're going to check, hey, does this result contain the key collider? So again, this is a dictionary, so it's just made up of strings and objects. Uh, we're checking those string keys here. So if it does contain the collider value, then we're going to check is it a spatial collider? Uh, this is just 
more for my personal project. You could check if it's another type. Uh, but if it hits a spatial that's also of the class type unit, then I would like to damage that unit. So this is just an example of how I'm using it to fire bullets in my world. And if it hits something that can take damage, hey, take some damage. <laughs> now, I'm going to have linked in the description the different, the different values that this result can contain. Um, again, this was kind of the weird part for me coming from Unity, but once you get used to it, it's not bad. It's just a little different. So that will be linked in the description as well. And if you have any questions about this, um, ask me in the comments section and I will try to help you out. <clears throat> so for tip number f <clears throat> for let's go over to my health script. So the reason we're here is I would like to talk about using signals in Godot. These are actually very similar to using Unity events in a la Unity because you can both connect and send. This would be like invoking the delegate in Unity. Um, you can send these events and connect them. Do I have an example of connecting it here? Let me find one. Okay, so here's an example of connecting to an event. So this world health inherits from base health and I'm connecting the out of health event or a signal in this case to this death function. Now you can type this in by string, uh, but I like using name of. Uh, that way, if I, let's say, change the name to kill world, now all of a sudden this is red and uh, it's gonna give me an error. Now, if it was connected to with a string, it wouldn't show me this error in the editor. So doing name of just just kind of helps the uh, the readability in VS Code. So I'll change this back to dead. And all connecting this event does is every time out of health is evoked, it's going to call this dead function. Simple enough. Now another way it's familiar to people coming from Unity is if you go to the editor you'll actually be able to see different signals. And if you go to the editor that has said health script on it, you can see the hurt signal, out of health, healed, health changed. And you can see right here that I actually connected one of the nodes via the editor to that signal being fired. They're very useful. Uh, one way that many people use signals in Godot is this call down signal up mentality. Now, all that means is if you're, let's say this world object, then for the most part, you should be having references to the objects beneath you and calling variables and functions via, and calling those variables and functions via reference. That being said, if you're an object beneath the object you're wanting to call, then just make a signal and connect it by a signal. Now, I don't always do this, but it is really useful because it allows you to make components that can run more or less by themselves. That's because if you're always calling down and signaling up, then if you test the component by itself, it's not going to error out because something above it doesn't exist in that scene. So again, very useful. I would like to talk about the awesome ability in Godot to use different scripting languages. So as an example, but not a recommended use case, let me bring up a C sharp version of this bullet script as well as a Godot version. So as you can see, 
So as you can see, they're functionally very similar. Um, we're getting the bullet's last position on ready. Over here in the process, we are moving the bullet. We're checking its last position using the Raycast again. This bullet GD script is actually from a little bit older project. So it does do a little bit different things here where it's looking for a method instead of checking for the object's type. So it does differ there, but overall they're very similar. And my reason that I want to show you this is, hey, if you're really used to using C Sharp and you love using C Sharp like me, then go ahead, use that for the majority of your project. But if you're new to Godot and you follow some tutorials you find on YouTube, well, to use the GD script that you got from that tutorial and vice versa if you're coming from this from someone who has used python in the past they love using gd script but they found some pieces of their project that they want to run a little bit faster well hey you could write 90 percent of your project in gd script and write a couple of classes in c sharp that are used over and over again that maybe are using uh, lots of processing and it's slowing down in Python but you could do it in C sharp uh, faster. The main thing is just use the tool that fits the job and use the tool that you're most familiar with. No hate which one you choose. I think using both is a great option. This is kind of a new video format for me so comment below with suggestions of changes to it or that being said if you did like this video please like subscribe and ring that bell i also make devlogs about my tower defense game that i'm making with godot and c sharp and gd script thank you for watching see you next time